150 years of God's faithfulness to the Moody Church. You know, in the Old Testament, God said to Israel, he says, thou shalt remember all the way in which the Lord thy God has led thee. Today, we are going to remember. If we are to read the passage of scripture I outlined in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it would simply say this. The Apostle Paul says, now uh, I, Apollos, watered, I uh, sowed and Apollos watered and God gave the increase. Paul said, the workman is nothing, God is everything. Today when I highlight the history of the Moody Church in the next 25 minutes, we need to remember the fact that there will be a few names mentioned, but those names represent thousands of others of faithful people. And Paul says each will be rewarded according to their wages, according to their work. But today we're going to give glory to God by giving you the history of Moody Church. I encourage you to fasten your seat belts because this is going to be fast, but I hope it is not only going to be interesting, but more important, inspiring as we think of the great ministry God has given to us and our future. Let us begin. First of all, the physical challenges of the Moody Church. By that I mean the space that is needed for, for the buildings to grow and for the congregation to grow in buildings. Think about that. Moody Church was founded in 1864 with 12 charter members. Seven years later, the great Chicago fire comes and it burns down. They could have quit, but they built a tabernacle, a temporary tabernacle. Then they built a beautiful church where Moody Bible Institute is today that's known as the Chicago Avenue Church. And when that became small, too small, they moved a mile north and they built this beautiful sanctuary. But before that, there was a tabernacle standing where the service station is over here. And that tabernacle was there for 10 years, but it was in desperate need of repair. So the decision was made that this lovely sanctuary called the Moody Church would be built and it was dedicated in 1925. Now I mentioned the Great Chicago Fire. In 1986, an arsonist broke into this building. I came here one Wednesday morning and was scarcely able to see the ceiling because of the smoke. Hundreds of people poured in from all over Chicago to help us clean up and that Sunday we had services here and the choir sang the majesty and glory of your name and I preached on the topic beauty from ashes. And so as far as we know for 150 years Moody Church consistently has had services every single Sunday and we give God the glory. When it became apparent that we needed more space, we have a lovely sanctuary but very little educational space, in the year 2000 we began a program entitled Reaching Toward Tomorrow. And we began to raise funds. We raised $27 million and of that 10% went to mission projects around the world. We gave away several millions of dollars actually. And uh, we purchased the parking lot, that was part of it. The Walgreens lot, $3.8 million. I mean, I can hardly uh, grasp that amount for a little piece of land. Like I told the congregation back then, I'm from Saskatchewan, Canada, and you could have bought most of southern Saskatchewan for $3.8 million. <laughs> but all that, thankfully, is paid for. We still have debt to the tune of $2.8 nine million, 2.9 million. Maybe there's somebody listening here and he says, you know, I'd like to help you clean that up. Well, you come and talk to me later or talk to one of our elders and we'll take you out for lunch and discuss how that might be done, all right? But here we are in this lovely facility and we have the CLC, the Christian Life Center next door. And now it's impossible for us to even think of how we could do without it. That little tour regarding the f physical challenges of the Moody Church. Now I want to speak about the relational challenges. The relational challenges. 
When D.L. Moody began, he was very interracial. Imagine that, 32 different nations represented in his school in Northfield, Massachusetts. And yet somewhere along the line during the civil rights strife, Moody Church bought into the idea of separate but equal. And so, to our shame, there were no African Americans who became members of Moody Church, though the Sunday school was integrated and they were allowed certainly and welcome to attend, but none became official members until 1962. In 1962, the Chicago Trib had this headline, Moody Church acts to admit three Negroes. And then it goes on to the story. The fact that the Church of Jesus Christ lagged behind during the civil rights strife and the civil rights uh, uh, advancement is certainly to our detriment. And all that I can say in looking back at the past is this, thank God that the past is past and the present has come. Because today here at the Moody Church, not only do we have an integrated pastoral staff, racially integrated pastoral staff, but also among us, I'm speaking today to people from more than 70 different countries of origin for which we give God the glory and the thanks. Now, speaking of the 1960s, get this history clear in your mind. Alan Redpath, the pastor during that time, he does leave in 1962 and he goes back to England. So for four years, the church does not have a pastor until Dr. Sweeting comes in 1966. It's difficult for any church to survive without a pastor for four years, particularly a church that is in a city during the 1960s when there was so much racial strife and turmoil in America, a very uh, pivotal time in American history. Now I'm told by those who remembered it, and when I came here in 1980, there were many people who could speak to the issue. Attendance was down to five or 600 people a Sunday. There was talk about closing the Moody Church and moving out to the suburbs. Could you even imagine something that would be that tragic if the naysayers had prevailed? But thank God that there were many people who still had the vision and who believed that Moody Church still had a future. And in 1966, when Dr. Sweeting came, I credit him with taking a church that was on life support and making it viable and beginning the path toward health and strength to the kind of congregation and church it is today. But those were dark times. Dr. Sweeting said he remembers that when Martin Luther uh, King was uh, assassinated and of course Bobby Kennedy, and then you have those riots in 1968, he said that when people went from the riot area and they would go to Lincoln Park, they'd walk right past Moody Church, and even though the city experienced a great deal of vandalism, thank God, Moody Church was protected and no harm came to Moody Church during those days. Dr. Sweeting said that he could look out and he could watch Chicago burn in the 60s. But the ministry continued, and for that we are grateful to God, 150 years of God's faithfulness. Now what I'd like to do is to give you a different category, and that is outreach challenges, outreach challenges. Way back in uh, 1893, the World's Fair came to the city of Chicago, and D.L. Moody took advantage of it. Of course, at that time, the Chicago Avenue Church was in existence. It had been built during that period of time, and he designated it, along with a number of other churches here in the city, that they would be flashpoints, as it were, for the great outreach to the Chicago Fair. In the fairgrounds himself, he set up uh, itself, he set up ten tents, and he brought in evangelists from Europe and all over the world, and singers. And um, then there were Bible studies in the different churches. 
and opportunities for sharing and ministry, and it is estimated nearly two million people, two million of the 27 million that came back then, over a six-month period, that two million visited various sites that were set up by our founder, Dwight L. Moody, because of his vision. Who knows the number that were saved? Now, there was another World's Fair, by the way, in 1933, after this building was established. But throughout the years here at the Moody Church, there have been various uh, evangelistic efforts. I'm thinking, for example, of Billy Sunday, whose funeral was held here in 1935. Now, Billy Sunday was a baseball player. He played for the Chicago White Stockings. I'm not making that up. It's the Chicago White Stockings. And he was converted at the Pacific Garden Mission, and he became an evangelist. And um, when I came here in the early 80s, I received a letter from a woman who was here during that period of time. She said that Billy Sunday, you know, whenever he preached, he'd always say, go hit a home run for Jesus. So he'd run across the platform and slide as if he's sliding into home plate inviting others to slide into home plate with him, namely to get a grip on Jesus. She said that he used to hop from this platform where I am standing to the lower platform without using the stairs. In other words, he'd just go like this and, and he'd be over. And uh, what an evangelist he was. Billy Graham in 1946 was commissioned here before he went to England and Scotland, before he became famous, and since that time has spoken here a number of different times, including in 1988 when I had the privilege of being here. And I know that there's a new generation that arises that might not know Billy Graham the way some of us older ones do, but we all remember him, don't we? I didn't plan on doing this, but let me remind you of what his voice sounds like. <laughs> okay. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to come, hundreds of you. You simply get up out of your seats, and I want you to come. And on and on it goes from there. <laughs> Two years ago, Rebecca and I had the privilege of being with Billy Graham in his home there in Montreat. And he told me, he said that when he brought someone from Wheaton College to the church here and walked in to the Moody Church, he said, I didn't know that there were that many Christians in all of Chicago, he said, <laughs> when he was a student at Wheaton College. So Billy Graham was here. Gypsy Smith, a great evangelist in the past, has been here. And we've had many different evangelistic efforts and outreaches. We've had Moody in the Park. We now have Moody Fest. We have baptisms in Lake Michigan in different ways, helping people to understand the gospel, building bridges to our communities so that they might know who we are and, most importantly, who Jesus Christ is, which is really the point of it all. Once again, I mean, it's a little dangerous for me to have listed these things because I know that many people are going to come up and say, well, you know, you forgot this. For example, we were some of the earliest people way back in the 1940s to begin to broadcast from the Moody Church. And you have those kinds of outreaches throughout the years. Now what, I'm like, uh, what I want to do is to give you a list of ministries. This is under the general category of missionary challenges. And uh, the categories that I list here, the ministries that I list, are either ministries that were begun here at the church or at least begun by Moody Church members so that really they had their birth here. And this is a broad category, and I'm simply going to give you this list to the glory of God. In 1890, Frederick Franzen, one of our first missionaries who knew D.L. Moody, worked in Europe as well as here in America. He began what became known as TEAM, the Evangelical Alliance Mission, which today still has its headquarters in Wheaton and is a great missionary agency. 
In 1905, the Sunshine Gospel Mission was founded here as a mission for unwed mothers. And the Sunshine Gospel Mission still is in existence today, still serving our communities. In 1914, the Cedar Lake Conference Center was begun by Moody Church leadership. The idea was that there'd be an opportunity to take young people and others to camp over at Cedar Lake, and that all had its genesis here at the Moody Church. And then uh, decades later, property would be purchased near um, Antioch, Illinois, and we would have Camp Moyoka for many, many decades. There was a young man from Russia, a teenager, who came over to America. Let me tell you his story. He um, didn't know that uh, food was really available on the ship that he would be able to eat. So his mother baked all of this bread and they let it become hard so that it would not rot. <laughs> and uh, for two weeks, he'd always go back to his room and then he'd look through the dining room of the ship and see all of these other people that were eating. And then some of the sailors said, look, we'll give you some food if you help us wash dishes. So he began to wash dis dishes so that he could get something to eat. Not until he arrived in America did he realize that all the meals were included in the price of the ticket. But this young man came to Moody Church at a time, not when this building was in existence, but the tabernacle that I told you about, and Paul Rader was preaching. And he sat at the back. It's okay if you sit at the back as long as you're listening. He sat at the back and um, received Christ as his savior. The young man, his name is Peter Dynica, and he began the Slavic gospel mission and the Slavic gospel work all throughout Russia. It is impossible for us to over exaggerate the impact that this ministry has had throughout the years. In fact, when the Iron Curtain fell and when Russia was actually opened, you know what they discovered? All through the churches, there were books where people had written down the scriptures that they heard over the radio, all of which which was really supplied by and sponsored by the Slava Gospel Mission. Still a great impact throughout the world today. In 1944, the Constitutional Convention, if we can call it that, of the National Religious Broadcasters met here, and their constitution was ratified. Huge organization that exists today that we are members of that has to do with uh, issues of freedom and uh, the media. 1946, the first National Sunday School Convention in America was held here. 1985, a group of women from the Moody Church here, and I remember this very well, got together and they formed what was known then as the Loop Crisis Pregnancy Center. And that ministry eventually began to grow. Today it is called Keras, and it exists in three different locations in the Chicago area. 1987. We had a young pastor whose name was Matthew Hurd, and Matthew said, I want to begin a church here in the area. So one Sunday evening, we commissioned 60 of our people. We gave him enough money for a year's salary, and we commissioned them to begin a church in the area, and that was the beginning of the church we know today as Park Community Church which exists about a mile from us, and we consider it to be a sister church, all founded here at the Moody Church. And since that time, by the way, we have helped other church plants come into being. I'm not sure that I have listed them all. In 1995, Moody Church began a new radio program entitled Running to Win. And that program is heard on hundreds of stations here in the United States. And thanks to Transworld Radio, it is heard in most of the Far East. I mean, I'm talking about Japan and Indonesia, half of India, and uh, different parts of the world. 2001. There was a woman here at the church, and still is here at the church, I might say, whose name is Danita Travis, and you know now where this is going. She asked God on a retreat, what would you like me to do with the rest of my life? That's a great question to ask. God laid children on her heart. 
She volunteered in our children's ministry. In 2001, she began By the Hand Club for Kids, begun right here at the church for the first few years, beginning with 16 young people from Cabrini Green, and think of how that ministry has grown today in four different locations throughout the city. Totally committed to the gospel, to ministering to children, and there's so much more that could be said about it, and you can go on their website and you can find out about that ministry. And hundreds of you have been involved or are now involved in By the Hand, a club for kids. What a ministry that has become. 2003, Mike and Karen Milko began to connect with Osiri Africa, and they challenged us. And they said to us, you know, the needs are so great there that on seven different occasions, we filled seven containers. Some of you remember that. We parked them out at the parking lot. We didn't have the building next door at that time. And uh, we filled them with clothes, medical supplies, household goods. I mean, I'm talking about huge truckloads, seven of them, uh, sent to Osiri. And that ministry today continues, and it is called Slipstream Ministry, the Slipstream Ministry. And um, in 2003, we began to stream live video of our Sunday morning service all over the world. And today, even as we are here at the Moody Church today, enjoying our service will be people, so far as we know, from about 80 different countries that we have heard from, enjoying the ministry of the Moody Church live around the world. How thankful we are for that. In 2006, there are two orphanages in India. And uh, these orphanages were uh, loosely under the leadership of Ralph Bourdais, who is one of our members. And so in 2006, the ministry called As Our Own was begun. As Our Own ministers to these children, the two orphanages, and we as a church have supplied help and personnel to those orphanages. Almost every year we have a team, we probably do every year, go over there to help medically, to help in all of the different ways. And as our own, as you may know, has the philosophy of ministry that these young girls rescued from a sex trafficking environment are to be treated as if they are our own daughters. What a difference that makes in that wonderful ministry, yes. In 2003, we relaunched our website. And um, we've always had a website for many years, but uh, it was redone, it was updated so that it could be everything that we wanted it to be for the glory of God, especially so that people around the world would be able to access our resources so that they could benefit from the ministry of the Moody Church. Well, I hurried through this list all too quickly. I didn't know I'd get it through it that fast, but here at 2014, we decided to take a deep breath and to reflect on 150 years of God's faithfulness and give him all the glory. When we think about the future of Moody Church, we know that our culture has greatly changed since the day of D.L. Moody. And there will be an opportunity for me in the future to speak about the future of Moody Church and the opportunities that God has given us. What we need to think about in the future is gospel-driven engagement. Gospel-driven engagement. As we think about the future, it is so critical for us to realize that the gospel that we so love cannot stay within these walls or within our own homes, but it must be out in the marketplace of ideas. The gospel must be shared in areas of the world here in the city of Chicago and around the world in the different countries wherever God may have led us and where our missionaries are. 
As we think about the future, it is not at all a sense of retreat. It is a sense of advance and saying, Lord, what do you have for us as the different decades roll by? To quote the words of Pastor Wiersbe, he liked to say, hats off to the future and coats off for the future. Excuse me, hats off to the past. Let me get that straight. Hats off to the past, coats off for the future. And that is our desire. And when we speak about what cultural engagement means, that means that we are involved in the controlling realities of our culture, both individually and as a church, but always with the knowledge that the centrifugal force of Moody Church's ministry is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just like the sun is the center of the solar system and all of the planets basically revolve around the sun, in the very same way, all of our ministries revolve around Jesus Christ, the Son of God, because he is the center of all things. And if you ask the question, what is the real bottom line message that Jesus Christ came to bring us? Let me refer to an experience in the life of D.L. Moody. One day Moody said that he was in a meeting and a man stood up and said, it took me 42 years to learn three things. And Moody thought to himself, if I can learn those three things quickly, think of the time it will save. It ended up being that Moody already knew those three things, but I wonder if you know them. Perhaps today I'm speaking to somebody and you are thinking that you're going to be able to enter heaven and you'll be able to do that with God's help by becoming worthy of heaven. Is that your desire? The first thing that this man stood up and shared was this. I learned I cannot by my works and my efforts obtain salvation. You are in a hopeless situation if you think that by your works and your efforts you will attain to salvation. That's number one. Number two, the man said, I learned that God does not expect me to be able to earn salvation or to gain enough merit whereby I can be saved through my effort and my work. God does not expect that. He knows you and he knows me better than we know ourselves. And we can't because everything we do is tainted with sin and our sins pile up and our failures are many. The third thing the man said is, I learned that Jesus did it all. Jesus did it all. And, and in saying that, I offer you today a Jesus who did it all. One day Jesus was with his disciples and he broke bread. And he said, this bread represents my body which was broken for you. Eat in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This drink in remembrance of me. Jesus said, in light of the fact that I shed my blood and my body was broken, it is finished. It is done for you if you are willing to believe and to receive the free gift of eternal life. We offer that to you today based on the words of Jesus and his authority that Jesus welcomes those who believe. Stop trusting yourself. Trust him alone. He's the center of it all. Father, we want to thank you today that in your grace, you have allowed us to stand on the shoulders of thousands of others who were faithful to the gospel, faithful to the ministry in so many different ways, sharing the good news with others. We pray today that you might bless us and may we always be willing to celebrate and joyfully celebrate your faithfulness. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You're watching Pastor Lutzer on Moody Church Media. If you enjoyed this and would like to hear additional teaching from God's Word, please subscribe to this channel or visit our website at moodymedia.org. May God bless you richly.